We now want to apply the dv d theta circle to a circular orbit. Uh, let's just review a, a few a few things. This diagram should be familiar to you by now. I'm showing here the planet at zero degrees angle of azimuth. Uh, the magnitude of the displacement vector is constant because we're dealing with a circular orbit. And as we proved uh, earlier, the speed of the planet is also a constant. This slide is uh, to remind you that not only do we index each velocity vector according to its angle of azimuth, there are two other angles that are associated with each velocity vector. First is the angle phi shown here. And remember that for a circular orbit, phi always equals 90 degrees. Therefore, for a circular orbit, the angle alpha, the other angle that we associate with each velocity vector, is always equal to 90 degrees plus theta. We have already shown that the magnitude of the dv vector divided by d theta equals gm divided by h. Okay, let's take any circle and let's take any segment of the circumference of that circle and call it delta s. And as long as we express delta theta, as shown here, in radians, we can say the following. We can say delta s equals r times delta theta. And furthermore, as we shrink uh, delta theta down and let it approach zero, we can say that ds equals r times d theta. Now, let's say that this circle is the dv d theta circle. What that means is that uh, dv is equivalent to ds. And so, do the absolute value here. Uh, the magnitude of dv equals ds. And so we can say that dv equals r d theta. So dv over d theta equals r. Well, r is the radius of this dv, uh, dv d theta circle. And if it equals uh, dv over d theta, then it must equal gm over h. So now we know the radius of our dv d theta circle. So here I've drawn a dv d theta circle, and I've uh, drawn in also v naught, and I've put the tail of v naught right here at the center of the circle knowing that uh, the magnitude of the velocity uh, never changes for a circular orbit. So um, a v naught that is the magnitude of v naught equals a constant, G, which is gm over h, which is the radius of our circle, as we just said. Uh, and that magnitude is never going to change. So every velocity vector that we're going, that we might want to draw in, has to have the same length. So they all have to be radii. So using the dv d theta circle in the context of a circular orbit is a rather trivial exercise because it, it's always it's it's going to tell us what we already know. So for example. From here, we could say, okay, I want to know the velocity at uh, 135 degrees of azimuth. Well, we would just draw it in right here. And we know that this angle would be theta. 
and we know that the um, the angle alpha uh, for uh, V135 is going to equal 90 degrees plus theta, or um, uh, 225 degrees. So we know the angle of uh, V135, and we know its magnitude, uh, which is uh, GM over H. And we know its distance uh, from the center of the orbit because uh, it's just going to be the magnitude of uh, the displacement vector. Uh, in other words, the radius of the circle of the orbit itself. So uh, we don't need the dvd theta circle to, to, to deduce all of that. But uh, I'm just taking you through the steps that one might use for any orbit, uh, whether it's a circular orbit or not. And when it's a non-circular orbit, we can use the a dvd theta circle to extract all kinds of information that tell us about the uh, orbital path. And we will see that in the following videos.